All right, all right. I hope you guys are ready for this because this is part two of a very, very special series about how you can start taking back your power with AI. And today we're actually going to be talking about beating signal jamming with low resources. So let's get right into it. If you haven't seen part one already, well, we talk about how you can evade government network uh, regulations if they're blocking off certain sites, if they're putting firewalls, etc. how you can avoid evade those. So check that out if that part interests you more. So let's talk about the problem first. So signal jamming specifically has been used in military context for decades because it can be used to disrupt various wireless communications. But what we have seen is governments are making the transition from using it on militaries with arms to normal regular civilians who are doing civilian peaceful protests, etc. If they can use it to block out communications, do internet blackouts, and thus they can control the narrative, you know normal government stuff but there is a way we can beat these tools and this post this video i'm going to teach you how you can make your own anti-jamming tools we'll go over two or three ai research papers that were really really good with this so that if you are interested in building your own deploying your own solutions this might be useful to you so approach one comes from signal analysis and that's really, it's based on the fact that if I can predict the jamming technique, so if I know how they're jamming my signals exactly, because there are a few different ways, they might be using different frequencies, et cetera, then I can find ways around it. So if I know how they're jamming me, I can be like, oh, maybe I can communicate on these specific channels. Maybe I can do this to avoid this. And this really, how we know what techniques they're using is just by analyzing the signal data. So we get the signal data, we see this is really corrupted, and by studying the corruptions, by seeing all of this, we see how we can actually, what kind of protocol is being used. And this uh, publication called Jamming Prediction for Radar Signals using machine learning methods actually figured out that, hey, we can use these signals to classify the uh, different jamming techniques and if one we can classify them this approach generalizes well what i can do is i can start predicting how they're you uh, how they're blocking me and how i can get around it simply put their experiment is they actually want tested two different protocols which is nice one was a general deep learning with feature extraction and the other is lstm so one we're directly feeding in the signal data to an lstm the other we're doing some feature extraction with it to see which one does better where and if they each have their advantages. We're training them on the same uh, data and we're testing them basically on their ability to generalize to new interference patterns. So I give them, I train them on patterns A through F and then I don't, I give them pattern G onwards and can my ML, can my AI models figure these out, predict them, figure out what is going on. That's the basic idea. Well, as mentioned, with an LSTM, we're directly feeding it into it. So that's um, the approach for this is given below. With the, with the feature extraction for the deep learning model, with the standard deep learning model, with signal analysis, you have a few different metrics you compute. First are the standard statistical computations, means standard deviations, skewness, and quadra. These hold true for all sequences of data not just signals so we can do that then we come using more sophisticated measures where we use autocorrelations framing fast Fourier transforms um, filter banks and less fft's etc if you want to know how they did it i can i would suggest reading the paper or i'll link an article below where i talk about how you can use how you can extract features from signals so i'll probably make a short video on it soon if that specifically interests you I personally think that you as an AI engineer should be looking very heavily to signal analysis because processing data as signals is so, so crucial when it comes to use cases like um, audio inference for making sure that uh, equipment is good when it comes to doing certain things like, oh, we're drilling the land to see, uh, to test for construction solidity, etc. You can actually use audio analysis there to uh, be like, oh, hey, uh, this part of the land is good. This part of the land has some problems later, that, uh, deeper down. So there's all kinds of things. If you have a Fitbit and you're doing a heart rate tracking, 
that's all signal analysis really you should learn how to process signals they're such an important tool and people are overlooking them a lot right now because all the vogue is about language modeling etc but signal analysis by a very very strongly recommended i'll do a video on it soon Next, let's talk about the performance. So this shouldn't come as too much of a shocker, but LSTMs are slower, but they do perform slightly better. So depending on which direction you want to take your tools, it might make sense to go with either one. You can do both. Have have one, have the have the mass one be the simple solution, and then LSTMs just come in for the if they're not working. It is interesting to see that there is a no, between the known types, there isn't as big of a dif performance difference. So, you know, I would go use DNNs there. But when we get to unknown generalizations, well, STM seem to do much, much better, which is where I, my recommendation is, hey, just uh, depending on your needs, if what you're building, you can go either way. I'd say try them both, see how they scale to your specific um, signal jamming uh, areas. But that can be useful to you. Next, I want to talk about another one, and this is a pretty interesting idea. It's called convolutional interference cancellation. So this is actually really, really cool. So what we're doing is we're using a CNN to be able to take in a signal, and we're saying, okay, we have this signal, we have this data. I want you to analyze the signal and create, produce a new signal that will cancel this out completely. So if you're at all familiar with physics, you have in waves, we have waves. So a wave goes like, like that. And if a wave is like this, and I put a wave that's like the opposite of that, and I kind of stack them together, they'll cancel each other out. So that's how like your noise cancellation headphones work. They get the, they study the frequency and uh, this thing, uh, wavelength of the noise coming into you, your ear, and they're like, oh, well, based on this, I'm going to create the inverse. So the inverse is going to go, it's going to cancel it out and you have, um, you have silence. So this is really based on a similar idea where we're using convnets to study with the signal coming in and using that say, uh, studying signal, we can actually predict what goes out. And the beautiful part about this is this, this scales to pretty much everything. There's no, this is not specific to any one kind of technique. So which is why they call this a universal anti-jamming solution which is really, really cool. It's got great implications. Uh, let's talk about it in more detail. I would highly recommend reading this paper and trying to build out your own two antenna protocols. It's not super expensive or hard to build and it can do so much. So highly recommend checking this out. From a math AI perspective, which is what this channel will focus on, is what we're doing is we have the reason we have two antenna instead of one is we're studying the both, both and we're kind of comparing the difference between the two so when we do figure out the difference between the two we can start to do some math with it so we know some inherent properties uh, from like studying signals studying physics about how um the jamming power is going to be proportional to the square root i'm sorry the parameter is going to be proportional to the square root of the jamming power that we already know beforehand from physics. The, all, then what we need to do is we need to estimate other parameters and that's where the um, CNN comes in. The CNN comes in, uses it, it computes the phase shift directly taken in the data. And guys, this is where you should be using deep learning. This is the kinds of things. A lot of people see my channel and they misunderstand me and because I spend a lot of time talking about where deep learning is not useful. That's only because in most cases, a lot of the cases that I see, people rush into using it without understanding where it's going to be useful, where it's not. In this case, the benefit of a deep learning method is it's taking in all of this data, it's being able to compute this, and it's able to figure out patterns that, you know, a human's not going to sit there and study the inch by inch difference between different phases and different phase shifts. So it, this is just leaving the computer to do what it's good at, which is why it works so well here. So th this is a perfect example of a use case for deep learning. As you can see, phenomenal results. Loving all of this. They have almost no bitrate error. And this actually works really, really well, even when we have 
much much stronger jamming than we do have regular legitimate sick calls so that what that shows us is that if somebody was implementing these if a government was just trying to brute force signal jam everything which they might do you can actually cancel out quite a bit using this now again as i mentioned this is going to be part of my series where i do deep dives into different ways of avoiding internet suppression or censorship um, the next one will actually be about mass surveillance it's called uh, poisoning the well where we use uh, where we send corrupted data to ai protocols uh, ai models etc so they break and this is really really important not just for censorship but also with companies like facebook google etc they, they're using your data without your permission so say you want to punish them you snooping through your personal albums etc and using those images without asking you what you can do is you can poison the well you can just throw that in there and it's not going to it, like their classifiers are going to have a hard time with them they'll misclassify they'll do all of that so they'll be training on corrupted data which is going to lead to bad results so that's what it's going to be on both on the social media side of things and on the avoiding mass surveillance side of things so if you're interested in that make sure you you come by for the next video make sure you're subscri subscribed if you like this i'd appreciate you hitting the like button sharing it with people you know because you you sharing is what helps me grow my channel and as i will always reiterate through my videos i am primarily a writer a lot of what i cannot like with youtube like speaking about the nuances etc it's just much easier to write those out if you know you are interested in this topic or any of the other topics i cover you can check out my free ai newsletter ai made simple it's going to have a lot more detail into what i cover it's going to go over um it's going to have all the references linked etc so it's just much if this kind of content interests you check that out fully free and that's it thank you for watching love y'all catch you soon peace